Welcome to another episode of The Hoss Talks Foss. We're here to bring you some of the awesomest news in open source. Let's get started. We hope you enjoy the show. Hey, Morgan. Uh, glad to see you here. Um, you know, I saw you move back to TyDB. You know, how are things going there? What are you working on? You know, what's, what's, what's the scoop? Uh, what's the scoop? I'm working as a developer, which um, actually I haven't done, I think, for 15 years or so. Uh, you know, with COVID coming around, I kind of took the opportunity to um, do less online events and kind of uh, figure out what I wanted to do. And um, TidyB has always been a fun project for me. So um, I joined the SQL engine team. And at the moment, I'm working on um, some security features, which um, it's interesting. I never thought that I'd be working on security features, but security. I mean, like honestly, like I, I, I want to protect my data, but security does seem a little boring. I mean, like you know, I, I mean, it, it. Maybe it's cool. Like, is it cool? Do you like it? I think it's cool because it's sort of time boxed. Maybe I might not always be working on on security. Ah, aspects. okay, all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, you've been around the open source space longer than I have. And I've been I've been in here since like you know 2007. So you you've been around. Yes, I I think maybe I've got a year on you, but oh oh well yeah okay. But I mean like you you've had quite the the, the career. You you've been able to sample many different things in many different areas. So right. you know that's exciting. And and I know you know coming back to to TyDB, you, you were able to jump right in and do some hackathon work, which sounds pretty cool. To, Tell me about that. Like I heard, like there was like a giant prize, but but they wouldn't give it to you, even though your 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 stuff was way superior to everybody else's. Right. Yeah. So last weekend, actually, we had a hackathon. Um, I think it's an annual event that uh, Pink Cap organizes. But you know, I've participated in hackathons before, just small scale projects. You know, maybe you you win a bag of coffee or something like that for participation. But you no, know, not this one. Um, the the prize I, I don't know what it is in U.S. dollars. I converted it to Canadian dollars, and it's like twenty thousand dollars first prize. Wow! So There's like some serious entries. Uh, you know, it's like a day and a half that you're hacking on a on a feature to try and you know improve TidyB and sort of leapfrog it in some area that you might not otherwise be working on. So, so is that like just for the company, or do they open that up to everybody? They open it up to everyone. So I had a team. There was four of us on on the team. Um, it just so happened that three of us work uh, for PinCap and uh, one from Tencent. So we chose to oh, implement okay. events, like similar to the event scheduler in, in MySQL, but for TidyB. Oh, very cool. Very cool. And and I saw you were working on being able to back up directly from that event schedule. Right. Yeah, that was my, um, that was my sort of proof of um, implementation in a way. So, you know, MySQL has backup, but the backup isn't a SQL command, sort of like an external tool. But in, in TidyB, the backup is just like the backup command or the restore command. And so um, combining it with an event scheduler, you know, just with a SQL command, essentially you can schedule your backup schedule for every day at this time. And the backup can stream directly to S3 as well. So it's kind of like, you know, you're on AWS configure, the AWS command line, you set up the credentials for S3, or maybe if you're operating in Amazon, you use an IAM profile. But then it's just the same command for everyone to be able to set up your backup, and it just keeps on running on a, on a schedule. Yeah, it's very cool to be able to back it up directly from the SQL command line, because you know sometimes you don't have shell access. Sometimes you can't do certain things. I mean, like na nowadays, especially with all the security concerns, you know, people right. lock down things that are you know crazy. So yeah, yeah that, that's mean, a very cool project. That was kind of part of the idea, right? Like you can do a cron job, you know, it's not replacing that, but which machine would you put it on? You know, TidyB server is uh, stateless. So if you kind of install a cron job on one of those servers, then you're losing that property. You put it on all of them and then you have to add a property to make sure that it only runs once. So it, it's just kind of architecturally elegant if the server can actually provide that feature itself. So with, with it being distributed, so does it then, propagate to all the nodes to back up? And... Yeah, the way it works is kind of cool. So you say to the TidyB server, which is the stateless SQL pod, um, start a backup. And then it speaks to all of the TyKV servers and kind of like aligns the needle, if you will, of what the snapshot point will, will be. Oh, very and cool. Then 
each of those servers actually directly stream that back up to, to S3, essentially. It doesn't pipe back through the TidyB server. It doesn't have to. Oh, wow. OK. I think and so then you'll get a consistent snapshot across all the nodes. Right. And you don't have to have like all of the space locally to be able to store a backup in what's database essentially designed to be very large. Because I think that wouldn't really work for cloud either. Wow, that's that's very cool. And when is that going to be in production? Come on, when is it going to be in production? <laughs> I think that's above my pay grade these days. Oh, so, all right. It's all a right. hackathon feature. Well, actually, no, I mean, I, I lied. The, the actual backup command, I mean, it's already there. It's in tidy before. That's when it was introduced. It's the scheduling part that um, is, is above my pay grade where. Oh, you know, well, well, maybe this will put pressure to, you know, get it in there. We'll see. But we could we could probably learn how to do that and, and use something similar in you know the MySQL uh, you know general space. So it'd be very right. cool. Yeah, I think the pieces are there in, in MySQL, right? Like the Clune plugin works inside the server. Uh, it's possible to add a scheduling layer on top of that. The event systems are already there. Um, I, I would love to see something like that. Cool. And so whether it's a hackathon or something else. Um, how do people get involved in contributing code or starting to, to, to maybe look at, you know, helping out with, you know, hey, I've got this idea, you know, how, how do I, how do I help get that implemented? I mean, you've been around this space for long enough where you've touched so many different components. I mean, that's, that's gotta be something that you, you might have some advice for some people on. Right. Yeah, I, I think for me, at least this time around, it's been a bit of a passion project. I've kind of got that opportunity to work on what interests me. But I, I think the same is kind of true for people starting out. You know, if, if you have good writing skills, uh, take a look at documentation. There's, there's plenty of issues to fix in, in projects there. Um, if you have feature requests, so you see feature requests, see if you can kind of validate them and help reduce duplication of existing bugs in the, in the bug system. I think that's a good way to, to get involved. And then uh, if you have coding skills, then obviously you can work on that too. But I don't want to start with that assumption because I, I think that's just the, the natural way that people think. And I think there's so many way, more ways you can add value. So being a veteran of the space, what do you see in that, that, the, that, that kind of the open source space that either excites you or makes you really sad and want to cry? <laughs> either one, either one. Yeah, I mean... Oh, I, did I did I get you, you're at a loss for words with that? Oh, come on! I like to be a positive person, so you know there's plenty of things that are very silly that you know you don't want to basically touch that one. But I think what excites me is is every time I see uh, people understand uh, like usability of you know in in the case of where we were trying to implement. Um, backups via a schedule. Obviously, you could do that with cron. And I think what excited me was, you know, when I chatted to my teammates and we decided we want to work on this and they all sort of had that same vision. I think sometimes we kind of like un underestimate, you know, that simplicity does win. And every time I see that spark, I think that kind of excites me. And I think that expectation of how simple something must be is, is kind of the bar is always getting higher. And I, yeah, I get it. Yeah. I like that challenge, you know, I, I think that's really, um, you know, valuable for everyone. Well, so, you know, you know, that type of challenge, you know, it's, it's something that excites people, that passion. I mean, that's really what drives a lot of people in the open source space, right? I mean, I think that's why I got started. Um, I think everybody's looking for that niche. And to begin, you got to start somewhere, right? And if you have a interest, you want to like, Huh, this doesn't work right. I want to I want to solve this problem. Right. I think that that's often like overlooked and that passion about like a topic or two is what really makes, you know, the open source space so great because you could just grab it and run with it. You know, I remember my first hack, if you will, you know, the, the first project I I, I got into. Oh, what was that? Oh, well, oh, you're going to bring up Waffle Grid. Oh no, it was actually before Waffle Grid. Right. But the Waffle Grid was pretty cool. Okay, Waffle Grid was pretty cool. Um, no, I actually uh, built a patch to disable uh, statistic, uh, automatic statistic uh, collection within NODB because um, I was working for a, a company that had um, 
oodles of uh, tables and you know uh, oodles of, of data and the index collection would refresh too often and screw up all the query plans. Right. <clears throat> so it was something to disable it and to 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 make some changes there. Um, and it was born because it was like, I'm annoyed that this thing keeps on happening, right? right. Um, but Waffle Grid was, was yes, it was a passion project for a while. Me and me and Eve, yes. I'm, I, I can't believe you remember that. But uh, oh, of yes. Oh, of course. Yes. It was the predecessor to all other clustered in memory databases. It, it was sure. it was it was years, light years ahead of its time. Yeah, I'm sure times 10 is infringing on some some patents of yours. <laughs> well, you know, hey, hey. Too much snap, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's okay. That's okay. It was it was solid. Um, it, it, we actually had one person run it in production. Do you, do you remember who it was? I do. It was Kenny Grip. Okay. <laughs> Kenny ran it in production. And, and I'm like, you ran this in production? And he's like, yeah, I just thought I'd try it. It didn't work. You know, yeah. so it's like, oh my God. <laughs> you know I followed a little bit. I learned some, some interesting things. Like, um, I think originally you were using like the LIU, uh, but, yes. but it doesn't kind of work in a way that you kind of want. When you got two LRUs sitting on top of each other, they don't work together. Something might be really hot in one and then it looks really cold to the other one. Yeah, yeah. So so there was there was some issues with that. We tried to rewrite it a couple times and then we just moved on to other things. I mean it yeah. It, although although it did generate um a very similar thing um because someone took the code and and moved it to Postgres. Okay. And they did something very, very similar in Postgres, which actually I think still exists today. Yeah, I think the idea is solid. Like, I apologize for my, my snack bar. I actually think that you could do something similar where you could run like InnoDB on top of like NDB or something. Yeah, and just so everybody who's listening who isn't familiar with Waffle Grid and went to the Wayback Machine to like <laughs> look at what Waffle Grid yeah. was, it was a distributed second memory cache that we built for InnoDB where when pages would get kicked out of um, memory, they would actually go to a memcached server. And so then we could pull off of memcached as opposed to pulling off of disk. But now with SSDs and the speed of SSDs, does it really matter as much, right? Because that network speed plus a pull from an external memory, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's questionable depending on, you know, the speed of your disk and the setup. So, you know, it was a but it was before its time and it and it faded quickly. Let's just put it that way. I'm sure we all have those those closet projects that were like, you know, oh, yeah. But I'm so, sure you learned a lot in the process, and that's kind of where it's still fun. Yes, I did. In fact, I remember Stuart Smith uh actually said to me and Eve, you know, like after that project, we were we were chatting, and he's like, yeah, you, you and Eve are one of like five people who actually know what InnoDB does um, at that time, which was kind of cool. I'm like, ooh, oh, that's that's very cool. Um, right. And then then uh, I stopped looking at the code and then I lost all those skills. So. Yeah. Yeah, and I think for others, like as I said, I, I kind of learned more about InnoDB by following your progress. And the well, I, I, and I think it's cool, right? I mean, that's that's the power of open source though is, you know, we can go out there and we can try cool things and learn from one another. And, you know, that's, you know, one of the things that kind of, you know, excites me and, you know, wants to make sure that other people do have the opportunity to learn from all of us. And, you know, whether that's the project and the hackathon that you're doing, you know, it's something that we're doing at Percona, um, you know, and we've always tried to be very open about like, you know, collaboration and sharing. So um, that's why I'm, uh, I'm excited this year because this year the focus is really on what can we do to bring more collaboration, bring more visibility, to get people to learn from you know different ideas and um, right. help the community move forward. So yeah, it's I exciting. have another I have another suggestion on what you can work on. So sometimes uh -oh. <laughs> I'm waiting sometimes for your suggestion. You have more experience than you than you realize. Like I think as a database developer or implementer, you might not have that production expertise of uh or you know knowing what solution you're you're solving i think the production people if they work on tools like you can see in a tool if somebody really understands what the, what the problem is 
and uh, I think this is why Picona has such great tools, right? Because that they they have yeah. that experience and that that validation. So, well, and the tooling is super important because you know it, it's 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 the problem solving, right? You know, everybody's about like. Um, uh, troubleshooting, um, optimization, observability now, right? It's the observability, you know, generation because nobody can have one database anymore. They have to have, you know, umpteen hundred, um, right. you know, and, and so to find that needle in the haystack type thing is hard, right? Yeah. I mean, it really is, you know, so. Yeah, um, I don't know how much time we have, but I also have a suggestion for observability. <laughs> oh, no, feel, hey, we time. have as much time as you want to provide. So let, let me give you the pitch, right? Okay. So um, currently, you know, you can see how slow or fast pages load. You can see, you know, how fast queries are. And you can use PT Query Digest or you can use Performance Schema. Um, but what if the database could give you like a transaction analyst view, view with the transaction kind of being named? So you say, you know, for logging in, these, this is the breakdown of queries. This is the wall time of the whole transaction, and this is the you know CPU time essentially of how much time it's spent on queries. So you're talking about kind of a roll up, you know, based up. on the transaction. So if it has ten queries that are part of that transactional state, there would be some tag or some mechanism to roll that up and, and consolidate it. And I mean, right. visually, I, I think of that as almost like a like a tree structure, right? And so you know, you've got transaction one, two, three, and then, you know, if you click the button on, on the UI, I'm a, you know, we'll go to the UI right. thing, it would then expand out and show you all the queries that were part of that. And then if you had any nested transactions or anything, then it would kind of just continue to dive down. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. I know that there are several projects working on commenting, you know, SQL code and, and being able to inject things through either ORMs or through um, other mechanisms um, to start doing some tracing. Um, because I think it's also important to get back up. Yeah, even beyond the transaction, because the transaction is one level. But think of like, you know, you know, like like what New Relic does or AppDynamic does with some of the applications, being able to to say this function or this page had this thing. I mean, I remember um, I'm gonna date myself way, 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 way back. I, I actually went and did a consulting gig for someone. Um, and you know, they're like, oh, we, we have so many performance problems. They, they did testing for like uh, accountants and lawyers, right? So you had to get certified every year and their, their certification window for the year for, for, I forget what it was, was coming up. And so they're like, oh my God, this takes like five. What was that? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like for one week, everybody in that industry has to take this test. And they're like, oh my God, this thing takes like five minutes and you go and you look at all the queries and, and they're all like hundred milliseconds, 200 milliseconds. I mean, there's nothing there. And it's not until you look that a single page generates 45,000 queries that you realize what the hell is that? Right. Um, right. And, and, and it's that aggregate view and how you get that. It, it's super important. And, Thank yeah, you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel. Go ahead and like this video. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and everywhere that Percona is. We appreciate it and looking forward to seeing you next week.